you don't necessarily have to goop these things up. But it doesn't hurt. Anybody who's ever pulled one of these things out and saw just how much damage can actually be done. Of course, you should try to get all the burrs out to begin with. But we'll do this right quick. Why not? This stuff's cheap, so use it. Alrighty. Now you just gotta try to keep moving it around, jiggling it around so you can get it in the press. This is one of those things where when you start pressing these on, if it's extremely too tight, you're gonna have problems. You can end up bending the barrel. The barrel will flex a little bit. I'm stressing a little bit. You'd be amazed at how many times even the professional builder will bend one of these things. But just be careful and if it's too tight, besides the chance of bending it, also when things are tight, it causes them to want to rotate as they go in. They don't want to just slide together. They'll actually start rotating around on each other. So press a little bit, check, make sure you're good. Press a little bit. Because if you've got the proper clearance press fit in here, about two thousandths, that's pretty freaking tight. And it's, you can move, you're not gonna move it by hand. You'll have to clamp on it and <laughs> it takes some doing. So you want to try to get these as close as possible. There we go, Gage. Always make sure everything's clean, chamber's clean. The thing about that anti-seize is, boy, especially on a Parkerized finish, oh, it just almost paints it on there. Yeah, might be a little loose. Do a little more squishy. Don't take much. You can use the toth tool on these, which is real good for fine tuning. But the toth tool will have a tendency to want to slide depending on how tight your press fit is. Because normally the rivets will actually there's a slots machined in the Toth tool, little clamping pieces. And it will start to slide in there until those rivets catch. And once those rivets catch, then it won't slide anymore. And I'm always kind of scared when I got one that's taking quite a bit of torque to go in. And it's going to end up wanting to shear the rivets or, you know, start gouging the rivets. But it hasn't happened yet. Probably will in the future sometime. But just doing it this way, we're just going to get it in there where it's... We don't have to be 100% perfect. We just want to get it where it's good and close now so we can populate the barrel. Because once we do all this, then we'll, we'll set the actual final head space once the trunnion is actually riveted into the receiver. And that's when we'll, we'll put our uh, head space spot on and then drill it. Alright, we got it pressed in pretty good for our head space. Like I said, we're not setting the actual head space. We just want to put it in there. There's our go gauge. Goes over. Locks in place. Doesn't really even wiggle around. Makes good contact over here. This will get you where you need to be to put the rest of the pieces on. I like to do it this way before I actually rivet the trunnion in. That way I'm only working with this and don't have everything else in my way. Some home builders have let me know they don't like it that way. But then again, I'm the one building it, so this is the way I'm going to do it. A lot of people will go ahead and put this in and then do this, and that's that's the normal way of doing it. I have done that before. I just get tired of the receiver hanging out of the back of it, and you got to move around. Okay, and I got to get pieces in between here. To, I'd rather just work on this assembly right here and then press it back out and then set it back up final headspace. As you can see, we with the no go, we don't go into lockup, so we're good. This will keep us 
or get us where we need to be to put everything else on because the only thing we're going to be pressing on is the barrel. We won't be pressing on this right here for the rest of the parts. We'll put a piece in here so you don't have to worry about moving it. That doesn't mean not check it from time to time. Yes, definitely do that. But you notice I dropped this on here. You won't go see that on camera, but there's little bitty teeny tiny fine particles from where I've done, you know, the grind, grinder and filing and stuff. If you, these roll around on your bench, you probably already do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Make sure all, everything's off of these things. Because those little bitty shavings will, almost like a magnet, want to stick to these things. Make sure they're clean when you stick them in there. Make sure everything's clean. Alright, we're good. We can put the rest of the barrel stuff on. Alright, for this rear sight uh, block here, typically on 99.99% .99 of them, the little ears here will basically be flush with the ears back here when you press it on. That's usually where everybody stops. Everybody knows on an AK that this little lip right here, this little recess section in there is where your dust cover mates into. Now I've had a problem on more than one where when you do it that setup where the ears and everything are level and then you put it all together and when you put the recoil spring in here and charge and everything it's going to push this dust cover all the way to the back against that little groove in the trunnion. It's going to push it all the way back in there until it stops. Well I've had some where you do that and this is just barely sitting on there. which is a problem <laughs> because when you shoot these things well, this is excessive here but they do flex and that's what makes them rugged They're, the rivets are leaded and it allows it to actually they stretch just a little bit I mean it's doing it so fast and just a little bit you can't see it with the naked eye but if you ever watch these things being shot in slow motion you see just how much everything moves the barrel twist everything moves all guns do that pretty much but the AK is really bad about it which is what makes it last so long. But if that's just barely sitting on there, I've never had it happen, but I've always scared that maybe it would pop off and get hung up, cause a malfunction, make it hard to get this off. Now if it's jammed in there, okay, how do I get this out? So typically I would, when I get ready to put this piece on here, I would put the front trunnion inside the receiver, put the rear trunnion in, kind of clamp it down, then I'd set everything up just to make sure and when it's butted up back here that this is sitting in here in case I need to move it in a little more or move it out. Alright, now my camera's on a tripod so that's why it looks like it, you're slightly off, you're not dead over the top of it. So I'm sorry about the, you can't see perfectly top dead center or whatever level. In order to make sure this is level with this, I've already checked that these sit on their level. And then all of this is level. So we're good. We'll go press that on right quick. Alright, we've got it on there. Check it here. We're good. We're golden. You're pushing here, but if you want to, you can check headspace every single time you press something on, it doesn't hurt. If you'll notice, there's a gap right there. You can see it. That's where I'm talking about. You can make your adjustment if it needs to come back just a little bit farther in order to make sure that dust cover is going to be nested completely in there. I like it to be all the way in. I don't want a big old gap in there like that. It'll still work, but I, just, I, I personally do not like that. You see there's anti-seize all over everything. This one is going together just whew, takes, even though there's two thousandths on every journal press fit, this thing is just sliding in there like butter. I've had some that were only a thousandths press fit and it was, because <laughs> that doesn't mean that the insides weren't tapered or something. It's real hard to know exactly what everything is without a set of uh, intra trimax. These just get you in the ball, ballpark. These are not 100% accurate.
I don't care what names on them. This is a crappy pair here, but all right. Next, always make sure this goes on. You're gonna have a real bad day. It's fixable, but you're gonna have a real bad day if you do everything. Then realize, oops, I forgot to put that on there. And yes, it does happen from time to time. All right. Now we're about ready for the gas block. All right, this one being a, a tauntal is slightly different. It has a little notch there, a little lip on the gas tube that fits down inside of the notch in here. And of course, this is all one piece. But it's kind of nice because you can actually look down here like a scope and line everything up nice and pretty. You can also, if you've got something long enough to put your flats on, either here or here. Hopefully this and this is machined together. And hopefully the lug here is parallel. Everything's concentric. It's not always a guarantee. You have to look for any way you can to help yourself out to try to help line things. Without the gas tube in here and this piece locked down, you can line all three of them up real easy. You just just three holes all lined up perfect. I mean, it looks good. Put this on here. Looks like we're going to be good. So I'll go press it on right quick. All right, that's on. You can see there's anti seize all over everything. It gets. I got to degrease it anyway before I paint it. So we'll get all that off there. You don't have to use nowhere near as much as I did. All right, here's a go gauge. Check that. We're going to check it with the, everything's out of the bolt. Check it with the carrier. It can sometimes headspace slightly different between just using the bolt by itself and then you turn around and put it in the carrier and it might be different. So always do final checks and stuff with this. Of course, we're not setting the headspace now, we're just checking. I always set my final headspace with a live around, make real good and sure that everything. And we go into we go into lockup. Got a little bit of wiggle to it, so there's still a little bit of fine tuning left to do. That's with the go gauge. Here's the no go. Make sure it's clean. Doesn't go. We're good. It's amazing how just a few thousandths, four or five thousandths, will actually cause this thing not to move. That four or five thousandths doesn't allow those lugs to go in and seat and rotate, which once that starts to rotate, that's what allows the carrier to move all the way forward. So that's why you can have a big gap in here with just a four or five thousandths difference between the headspace. They've got to rotate around those lugs. Once that bolt rotates around that lug, that allows that carrier to go all the way into home position. Now all I gotta do is try to get the front side on straight. Now we can get this thing point aim, point impact, hopefully. All right, it's on. Cool thing about this one is, is it uses a little, similar to a crush washer, got a little flat on the top of it. Okay. Let's see, right here. Goes on there. Helps you get it nice and snug and doesn't rattle around on you. 
it's snugged up right there, but it's got just enough play in it to squish it. Get it right in there in line with that hole. Hey, something didn't look right. Look at there. After pressing it on, I can now move it by hand. Oops. All the others you can't move, but this one here I noticed when I was looking at it, it started to wiggle a little bit, and I wiggled and wiggled and wiggled and wiggled and wiggled. The next thing you know, I was able to pull it loose. Huh. Even though I measured the journal, something's not right. So. And just because you can't, like I said, you can't measure the inside, so you have no idea if it's bowed in there, and the only two places that actually makes good connection is on the ends. And when I pressed it on, it may have pushed that right on out of there. So now how do we fix this? All right, I came in and took an old punch that I broke and ground a real sharp point on it and used that to booger up the journal there. Now I gotta press on there. Okay, as you can see, I have not pressed it all the way on yet, but you can't move that booger now. So this does work. For all you people out there who are, most of you are smart enough to figure that out. I mean, being an AK builder, part of the process, it's 50% gunsmith, 50% blacksmith. There is way, it's, this is a very simple gun but in order to put it together in your garage, it's very complicated. Well, I really shouldn't say complicated. I mean, you can, yeah, you can basically use a hammer and you can put it all together. But it's it's way more intricate and way more of a process and pain in the butt if you don't have proper tools or skill sets. I'm not saying that you got to be a genius to put these together because you don't. But it's way more involved doing any kind of an AK build from a parts kit as opposed to doing, say, an 80%er uh, AR build. Ooh. But yeah, there's a lot more involved in doing this than doing an AR. In the AR, you're just putting something in there and tapping a little pin in and, okay, we're good. <laughs> this is way more involved. All right, it's all the way on. Gas tube comes on and off. Can't rotate it by hand anymore. That's good. Kind of wish this one had the lever in it. There's some that have a lever and this one's just a screw. Or the slotted for a screw. But the hand guards are different than your typical AK-47 or AK-74. It all just fits in the slots there. It's got that little, almost like the lower hand guard on most uh, AKMs will have this little piece under here. Some do, some don't. Oh, yeah, it all goes in the slot. Nice and snug. There's a slight gap here. I don't really care for that much, but nothing I can do about it because it's this piece. It's not everything else. It ain't gonna hurt nothing, it's just something I noticed, so being OCD, it'll bother me. But I think we're good. Check everything, make sure nothing binds up. Alright. I don't feel any drag. Sometimes when you take these things in and out, you'll notice they'll have wear marks somewhere on them. It just means that <laughs> stuff may not be perfectly in line. All right, barrel's out of the trunnion. As you can see, there's no galling on it anywhere. 
looks real good. Of course, they put this recess in here to help guide it. So it goes in that far before it ever even starts to press, which I like. I really like when the people who make the barrels do that. I don't think I've tested the hardness on this one. Because it dimpled down here real easy. Of course, 25 is not hard on a C scale from Rockness Hardwell tester. Now we're ready to do the fun stuff. Start riveting everything together and make it an actual firearm. <laughs>